Um, hello. So, you know, very interesting meeting, a lot of interesting stuff. So, the, this particular presentation, um, I would like to position as basically a little project that we've done that promotes Transmart is a hypothesis generation tool. So a lot of stuff has been said um, about how Transmart can be used for organizing data, integrating data, for collaborations and things like that. So I really would like to um, see a little bit more of you know, people using Transmart to actually generate hypotheses. And our training yesterday was about that, and this project was also is also about that. Um, and I know everybody's hungry and wants to go have lunch, so I'll just zip through this. So, um, so we felt that Transmart is, um, especially the newer versions of Transmart, is really almost ideally positioned to integrate different data types. Um, we were very fortunate to have a project with uh, Mark Serrano that, oh, I'm sorry, I, MSD, okay, all right. Um, all right, thank you, Julie. So that basically they were on board with this um, idea of using Transmart as a platform for um, analyzing complex data, different types of data, data from different um, studies, including preclinical, and we wanted to run um, this proof of concept project, which wasn't really a pilot. Uh, we actually reported on a pilot for this project last year. Um, this was a significant extension of that, and um, basically the, the goal was to uh, push Transmart to its limits, load tons of different data types, and see what happens, and try to possibly analyze those. So the installation was version 1.2.4. And uh, we had to roll over the data from the uh, Postgres version 1.1, which was fun in itself. Um, we performed um, pretty extensive data curation. And again, we showed that last year, if some of you may, may remember this um, NIME uh, workflows that we, use for, we used for preclinical data curation. So I, I'm not going to uh, repeat that. But there was extensive curation effort. And the centerpiece of this project was actually a TCGA data set. And another aspect of this particular presentation is that I would like to focus on TCGA as a data resource and uh, how Transmart can be used to find um, interesting, I guess, knowledge, knowledge, knowledge pieces in that pool of data that, that is TCGA. Okay, so um, for those of you who are technical, um, this is the, um, the, the, the technology that we use. So this was an Oracle installation, thank goodness. Um, the da data-wise, so there were several um, uh, components that we worked with. So first of all, there was this animal um, model data. So that is basically vendor catalog data. So basically the description of, of mice um, that is used. Then, in addition to that, uh, we had in vivo tumor growth uh, data. So these these are the ones. Th this is the data that had to be curated using very um, elaborate nine um, workflows. So this one um, basically contained information about um, tumor growth in animals. The animals were treated with standard of care and proprietary uh, Merck drugs, and um, we pushed that into Transmart. So then we chose two um, simple um, geo studies for time series um, uh, workflow evaluations. So not very um, elaborate, but they, they serve the purpose. So for TCGA, um, Merck uh, obtained uh, access to uh, two um, uh, oncology subsets in TCGA, and that ha that's head and neck and colorectal cancer which we um, got as well and curated uh, for this particular project. Um, EQTL data was proprietary and supplied by, by Merck. And then also in addition to everything else, we pushed the magic data set that Pfizer uploaded as a part of their um, uh, GWAS and uh, GWAWA, GWAWA uh, plugin. <laughs> so um, another component and the last component of this whole thing was um, a proprietary R script uh, developed at Merck 
for analyzing the tumor growth data. So this is, again, was reported last year. We actually integrated the, this um, um, R script into the installation. So again, um, just a brief reminder of how this whole thing looks like. So for the uh, preclinical data, we had um, um, a sub-study. It had a lot of data points in it. Um, so this was um, for, for the mice, and that's the tumor growth thing. So this is just the, uh, uh, basically the um, um, sort of an expansion of the tree to show, you know, we, we spend a lot of time trying to come up with a, with a good ontology, how to pivot the data, should it be drug-centric, should it be um, uh, animal-centered, and all that good stuff. As you can see, it's uh, drug-centered. Drug um, and this is the, um, you know, it, again, very um, uh, brief expansion of the TCG data set. We followed the standard ontology in Transmart. Um, I think um, we um, basically organized everything, again, exactly as everybody else is doing, and so just followed that, um, that lead. And so the cleaning up of the data and of course, a unification of both colorectal and hand and neck cancer was a little bit of a challenge because, you know, we, we had to manually inspect all the clinical data, find the overlaps, bring them into alignment, uh, make sure the units are the same and everything else. And, I, you know, if you guys haven't had any experience with that, that's a lot of fun. Um, but we've done it. So this is just, again, the... Um, um, a screenshot of, of what was done in terms of the preclinical data. So this is this new script that you won't see any in any other installation. So it's called tumor growth, and the output of that is just this linear plots. That um, the, the 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 good thing is that you can plot as many as um, as as you want. If you drag an appropriate drug into the analysis window, you would see these plots for. Um, for, for multiple drugs. So this is just a comparison of control and this, um, this compound here, but um, you can have many. So this is the, the nice part about this um, R script. Very useful for preclinical data. All right. Um, additional things that I would like to mention. So for um, MGS data available through DCGA, we chose to load that as VCF files, and that's my, my preferred method. Um, we had essentially three <coughs> components to that NGS stream in this case. So there was DNA-seq data, there was RNA-seq data, and then there was RNA-seq somatic mutation data. So one of the things that we did find, which uh, was interesting, is that um, uh, in Transmart, um, in the original um, version, uh, how did you call it, Yanis, vanilla version? Yeah, vanilla version. Um, if you, for example, have RNA-seq data, but you have these two streams, just the RNA-seq and RNA-seq somatic, and you happen to have the same SNP in the both data sets, it would not display correctly in the genome browser. So I just wanted to make sure that everybody uh, who deals with those things knows that and pays attention to that. <laughs> It took us a long time to figure out what was wrong, but eventually it turned out that you actually need to specify the, well, the study, um, or, or rather the assay type to correctly get that um, d displayed. So for some reason, that is not the part of the default category CD. Okay. Um, the EQTL data, um, it was formatted to look like the magic data set, which, which is the templated data from Pfizer. And again, there's um, nothing particularly challenging. You just have to, again, pay attention to your, to your data and understand what um, data label means what and just simply format um, the QTL data to look like the magic set to be able to use the loader that is provided. Okay. So once we loaded everything, uh, QC'd everything, um, we really wanted to um, show our clients and ourselves what, what, what can we do with this particular study, what, what can we learn. So we looked at a lot of things, and that's the beauty of Smart. It really allows you to investigate the data very, very fast. 
and uh, we decided to focus on um, head and neck cancer, one of the reasons being that that's a fairly, um, uh, well, compared to colorectal cancer, it's significantly less explored in the um, 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 oncology uh, situation. And so we looked um, at several um, parameters that were available in the study from TCGA. So the um, HPV, HPV status of the tumor, we looked the, um, at the expression of EGFR um, in, that, um, in that cancer, the disease progression uh, parameters, drug response, lymphocytic inf infiltration, and we also investigated a number of um, literature gene signatures. So we ultimately decided not to go with the um, drug response data. It would have been very interesting, but this is um, another aspect of TCGA. The um, information that is available on drug response is very, very limited. It's very scattered, and, and uh, one of the Good things about Transmart is that it allows you to identify those holes very, very quickly. So if you were to load all of the TCJ, you would have seen that the overlap um, by drug uh, between these data sets is, is pretty minimal. So um, to me, this is, this is a good thing about this platform. It allows you to see where the holes in the data are. And basically, if you're planning anything new, you should definitely be inspecting your uh, data sets with something like Transmart. I think Spotify integration will help you even more uh, by looking at all those histograms and pie charts. Um, the gene signatures that we looked at um, were specifically focusing on investigating or asking a question about the role of immune system in, 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 the, in cancer. We, we wanted to look at the T cell function. So what I've done is I went to um, A literature, just general PubMed, be uh, my SIGDB database and just searched for anything that was available that would um, maybe allow um, researchers to, to ask um, about the role of T cells in um, head and neck cancer. So um, I had probably um, about five gene signatures that I wanted to look at and also generated a number of gene signatures directly from the data, for example, using EGFR um, status as a distinguishing parameter. And what we found is that, well, what I wanted to focus on at the end uh, was the HPV signature. So the situation was head and neck cancer in TCJ such that the explicit flag for HPV signature is only available for 80 samples out of about 500 in TCGA. So what we've done is we created um, a comparison uh, for this 80 samples um, with regards to HPV status, and we uh, generated a gene signature out of that that presumably distinguishes people with HPV positive um, head and neck cancer from people with HPV negative uh, head and neck cancer. Probably you, you, you all heard about this, that HPV has been implicated as one of the contributing factors to the aggressive phenotypes in this cancer. So it was kind of interesting um, to, to look at that. So we then took the remained, remaining approximately 420 samples and, and asked the question, so can we find that HPV signature in those samples? So again, no explicit flag for that in DCGA. And here is the simple hierarchical clustering. And so you can see that, um, you know, we're seeing some pattern. You definitely see a pattern. I mean, it's not a very clean and, and, and you know, bright pattern, but there, it is a pattern. So that um, finding is also confirmed by quite a bit of publications. There was recently a paper published on um, where people actually uh, have done metagenomic um, analysis and they did confirm that upward 70% of hand and neck cancers do have HPV signature present in it. So um, we, we observed the same thing. So, and it took me less than a day to find that. While if people who are bioinformaticians would know that, that doing metagenomic analysis is, is a pretty serious investigation that you need significant resources. And again, I'm not saying that it's a substitute, but it generated a hypothesis that um, may be useful to someone who is looking at these kinds of cancers. 
So then in addition to that, we also queried the data using these gene signatures from literature that again I um, wanted to look uh, specifically at the T cell uh, function in the in head and neck cancer. And what we found is um, there was, um, there was uh, significant clustering observed there. And to me, that actually uh, makes a lot of sense. Again, there is a lot of literature um, around this. And um, basically, the, the hypothesis becomes that in head and neck cancer, people observe um, a disrupted function of a certain type of T cells that are um, helper T cells, and they basically are supposed to kick in when you have a secondary offense to the immune system and uh, help, you know, body, I guess, fight, the can fight cancer. And we clearly see that in this particular set, that, functional, that function of T cells was actually compromised. So that's another hypothesis. So again, within a few days, you can have a relatively interesting um, threads, if you will, that you can give to your bioinformatician or people who really deal with data on a much deeper level and send them to investigate data much, much deeper. Okay. Ah, and the, the fun part was that uh, from that HPV signature, what we've actually done, we uh, also investigated the mutation status of the genes that were upregulated in the HPV positive cancers. And um, that's um, another um, advantage of Transmart. So once you have all the data in one place, you can really quickly um, look at the, the mutation status of these genes. And um, we have narrowed down the list that I had for the, from the, for that signature um, to um, a fairly short list. And, you know, and again, I, I, I don't want to you know, dwell on this too much because we actually wrote up a paper on that. It's submitted, um, it's being submitted to uh, BMC Oncology. But um, there are a few things there that are fairly interesting. So this caspase, for example, so th that one turned out to be significantly mutated and upregulated in HPV positive uh, tumors. You know, this, this particular gene is actually known to be disrupted during the HPV um, uh, infection. And so that points out to a dysregulation of this whole apoptosis process. So that makes, makes sense. Um, another one was um, uh, Fanconi anemia factor. And so this one also has been implicated quite quite a bit into, in the... Um, in the um, oncogenesis, reason being that it actually participates in um, not one but three different processes that help you, uh, that help the cell repair DNA after the challenge, after the onco challenge. And again, this guy has been mutated significantly as well as um, its expression was altered. So just a few interesting findings. Okay. Um, a few things that <laughs> Uh, um, so there were tons of good things. There were some things that I also want to point out in the paper because we want Transmart to keep improving and some of the obvious things were. So the, wor the workflows are not smoothly connected. I think I keep beating this drum for a while now. Um, it's really inconvenient to generate a gene signature using the marker selection workflow and then you know, go into Excel and try to, to apply the signature in clustering you know, it would be really nice to have a one button that moves your just generated signature into another workflow. And it's probably quite simple to do. So some of the um, workflows that we're using are fairly limited. And, you know, if you talk to bioinformaticians, they would all tell you, why, why are you limiting yourself to, to top 200 or to top 50 genes? You, you're supposed to find all the genes that are um, disrupted. And I agree. Uh, right now, that that's a limitation of the workflow. It makes it simple, but it also makes it kind of limited. Um, and finally, the um, the genome browser and querying the genomic data. So that one is also um, a little bit um, limiting because one of the questions that everybody would ask next is like, okay, you found this uh, mutations in these interesting genes. In how many people do you have this mutation? Um, and right now, the only way to answer this is to basically take the data out and do the analysis elsewhere. 
um, it would be really nice to have this information straight there in Transmart. Tell me if I'm wrong. So, um, you know, these are the, again, the very simple steps that I think will help Transmart usage. It will draw people to, to this platform. It will show them that it has value and simplify this hypothesis generation workflows. And again, improve workflows in terms of allowing a little bit more flexibility to draw uh, people who are, um, you know, who know what they're doing basically with their workflows, um, improve workflow crosstalk, and also um, identify gaps in data sets and fill them. So this is to me the biggest thing. It's nothing less frustrating than to go into your analysis and say, oh, I have this great idea now. Let me find a data set um, also maybe on uh, head and neck cancer, and you find it, and it has no data there that you can you know, apply your gene signature to just because people in that particular data set happen to measure something completely different. So um, to me, these are the three things that I would definitely like to see in the next reincarnation of Transmart. So um, that's about it. I would like to acknowledge the efforts of MSD team who um, provided the data and obviously the support for the project. I would like to um, thank um, Rancho Biosciences st staff that helped me uh, while working on this project. And of course, Julie for making this all possible and dedicating time for me to, to actually work on the project and, and write the paper. So thank you. Thank you. Um, so questions? Answer any questions? Uh, you have mentioned that our plugin in, yeah. in, in the beginning mm -hmm. of your, I was wondering, is it available for uh, on the Transmart Foundation? So I think Julie's working on that for you. Okay, and then it will just become the part of the whatever next. Uh, During the next scheduled release, okay. I'm going to have that. Well, okay. Okay. do you plan to yeah. document it as has been suggested? It's documented, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. It's a nice presentation. Thank you. The uh, case has a question. Yeah, I'd just like to point out something what's interesting. Um, the things that you, you suggest as you know things to improve in Transmart. Actually, exactly the topics that we're working on for Transmod 1.3. I mean, isn't that great? <laughs> we're working on the, the workflows, Thank you. right, to make that better. And the other project. Uh, so I'm happy I correctly identified the, the needs. Unfortunately, <laughs> yeah, you 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 right on spot. I think for the genetics, unfortunately, it's only SNP data. So if you have full genome sequencing, as I pointed out in my presentation, that's going to need, you know, a series rearchitecting. But if you have SNP data, yes. Thanks, Keith. Yeah. All right. Also, Good questions? Uh, yes. Um, I have a question. Um, actually, one comment and one question. Part of the, the 1.3 features, um, part of the making workflows, sort of working together and stuff, we are working, I mean, we're working with case team. So. You know, I think great minds think alike, I suppose. <laughs> I think everybody wants that, and it, it, it's going to really help to yeah. actually use the data that you, you know, worked so hard to get into Transmart. Exactly, use, yeah, you know. and then and streamline the workflows in a way that you don't have to reload every time when you look, you know, run yeah. one workflow, yeah. right? So yeah. the ideal situation is you load the data, and you can run different analysis on it. And that way, you it's really streamlined, it's really fast. But my question is actually on one of these uh, three bullet points that, that you're asking, um, identifying data gap or yeah, so how it how is that gonna be solved by Transmart? Because well, I think there's a little bit of an intrinsic issue with well, different data sets. I don't know why it's yeah. So. Um, 
I guess maybe it will not be sold by Transmart per se, but it should be sold by us collectively as users. You know, it's, um, and again, I don't know, I mean, we can, we can request things from people, right? We can, it's, it's more of a, I guess, I don't know, philosophical thing to me, but it is important. And uh, I like to use Transmart to identify the data gaps and make people aware of those gaps and eventually fill them up. Right? Oh, so I see. that's that's all I'm asking. I'm not asking our our community to start doing experiments to fill in the gaps. So that's definitely not what I. But another our, sort of another question is that um, do you see sometimes the gap is is artificial? If the data is actually there, but just the way it's not because it, the data sets are not normalized, the vocabularies are not normalized. That could be also an issue. I, I I'm. Yeah, I guess we see this sometimes. Like even in this, t in, in in the TCGA data set, um, these two um, different cancers had same data, which was related to um, lymphocytic infiltration, but it was called differently. Yeah, exactly. So and unless you have a, a person who understands, you know, who is a subject matter expert, you would not even know that it is. And so if you like to use NLP tools for data mining, you would not even see that there is these two things there that are actually the same thing. Yeah, so that's exactly actually uh, my point of uh, actually data curator. They not only have to be a data scientist or, or data um, a data scientist who's really good at manipulating data, but also actually have to consult a subject specialist. Yeah. And, and the, actually often that step is a um, you know, minimize as much as possible because I understand that it's very time consuming, it but is. it's actually very critical. So. It is. Yeah, and so I think eventually um, this this artificial data gap can be solved by requiring people who submit data to that same TCGA to follow the standards. I'm, I'm not saying that we should do this right now, but it's eventually, again, as people use the platform and understand all of those things, hopefully that would uh, drive other resources as well to adopt the correct standards and then we'll have some fun things to do. You have to. I know this question isn't directly to the point of your presentation, but I was wondering if you could comment briefly on the clients did this to evaluate Transmart as a platform and how they felt the pilot came out. Um, how did how did they feel pilot came out? I think Yeah, I think when we started this project again, we started um, in 2014 with a with a pilot.